That is so fun. So they just want me to be pruny. Hey guys, I just finished a workout and it's shower time, but I also want to change my hair color yet again. So we're gonna kill two birds with one stone. Girl. I am going to remove the color and then I'm going to recolor it all throughout the whole process. I'm gonna be answering questions that you guys asked me on Instagram. <laughs> Let's go to my bathroom. My hair looked like this. It was blonde, but I have been really wanting to go back to this darker brown. But then I was like, it would be kind of fun if I went kind of red. I toned my hair with this. It turned out like purpley burgundy, did not love it. So then I put this over it. So my hair has a lot of different things in it and the coloring is just like, I mean, it's not horrible, but it's just not what I want it to be and it's coming off red. We're gonna use Color Oops and I've used this before and it totally works. I just got it from Target. Then we're gonna use this. This is medium chestnut brown. We'll get there later. But first we need to remove this color. I'm constantly moving and I'm constantly changing my hair. Dry hair. Okay, we have to apply this on dry hair. Bottle number one is going into bottle number two. Now we shake it for 30 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty. Okay, I'm thinking I should section my hair off. Okay, now that I have my light. Oh! What is that? Oh my gosh, I need to put the gloves on. I'm a little nervy. Oh, it smells so bad. Whoa. Oh my, this is heinous. Next layer. Oh my gosh. It smells like rotten vegetables, that's what it smells like. Whoa. Okay, I think, I think that's everything. Girl, this is not a cap, this is a bag. I'm about to look so cute. Love, 18 minutes. Now let's hang out. Let's go to Instagram. Ah! Red alert. <gasps> I think the man that I am still in love with has a new girlfriend. I'm honestly not that phased, but I'm praying for her because he's crazy. I don't know why I'm still in love with him. What is the biggest lesson you learned this year? I think that you create your own confidence and that confidence can get you so far. Because I feel like I've really come into myself so much more this year, been more sure of myself and like the things I do and the way I present myself. I have been so, so much happier this year than I was in 2022. 2022 was one of the worst years of my life for my mental health and just how I was. Like I was just not good. And I think I was more concerned with other people and what they thought of me and what how comfortable they were and what they wanted to do more than I was concerned with myself. And I honestly didn't have the strongest sense of self-worth and so it was really easy for me to just kind of go where the wind blew me and not really care for myself in more more ways than one definitely caused me to lose myself i lost myself like a pretty good amount last year but this year has been like like the whole year this year has been me repairing that damage getting to know myself better and just creating a stronger sense of self what i have to offer it's just kind of more of like a feeling i just move differently and i think that does have a lot to do with confidence not necessarily like being the most confident person in the room and being super outgoing and whatever not really that kind of confidence more so confidence in who i am i hope that made sense how are you doing mentally why did you feel the need to have a break from youtube i am doing well actually i can say that i am very stable oh my gosh this guy asked me out on a date yesterday not the guy that i talked about in my apartment decluttering video but this other guy from my past who really just did a number on me emotionally he was just not good to me but for some reason i have like this deep rooted obsession with him i don't know i have some weird connection to him anyway he asked me out on a date and i said no which is crazy and that just shows my growth <laughs> and how stable i've been like that's actually pretty crazy for me. Why did you feel the need to take a break from YouTube? Because I have felt burned out from YouTube and just like everything that I do. I've, I've, well, okay, I felt burnt out for 
like two to three years now because I've been doing this since I was literally 12 years old and so I felt like it was like I have this intense desire for growth to reach my potential whatever I don't know and I felt like YouTube was something that was I don't want to say holding me back but not really allowing me to take the time and gain the space to further explore my talents and my skills and my potential what I can do and who I can be I just felt like like a break from YouTube was well overdue. It did kind of give me a little bit of a, you know, I think it was good and it was fine and I'm happy to be back. It's really fun. Why LA and not OC? If you don't know, I'm moving to LA. I'm sure you know that by now if you've been keeping up with any of my content, but I'm moving to LA at the very beginning of December and I'm not gonna move to the OC because I did live there previously from 2017 to 2020. To be totally honest with you, that place for me is kind of like a stain on the state of California. What? I just have a lot of like negative association with that place and I feel like it's kind of just been tainted a lot And so I don't really want to live there again And also I don't have any friends at all in Orange County All of my friends are in LA as well as all of my potential work things LA has been calling me and I am answering finally how to stay confident with acne been there It's not a walk in the park. So I get it. It can always be worse You got to make a conscious effort to show yourself love through looking at yourself in the mirror and speaking kind words to yourself Journaling letting out all of your thoughts writing down things that you're grateful for and writing down things that you love about yourself That actually works wonders remind yourself that you're taking care of yourself skin. You're taking care of yourself. You're probably doing everything that you can to make the acne go away. And so just knowing that can give you a little bit more confidence. Like, I know this is not a permanent thing. This is not a forever thing, even though it may feel like it. I felt like it was never going to go away for some reason, but it did, of course. So remind yourself that it's not permanent. You're still beautiful. Just because you have some spots on your face doesn't mean you're any less beautiful. Like, you are beautiful, gorgeous, special, unique, one of a kind, there's nobody else in the world like you. I remember when I had acne, I had cystic acne, I like never took selfies. I always avoided my photo being taken and stuff because you just don't really feel like yourself and you don't feel, you don't feel great, whatever. But on those days that I did, I made sure to take selfies. I made sure to capture when I felt pretty, even though maybe I looked exactly the same as I did on a day that I didn't feel as confident, on that day that I did feel confident, I would capture it and I feel like that was kind of cool and kind of helpful for me. Also, who cares? Our body is just the shell of who we are. It's not who we are. Let that sink in. You move a lot in different cities. Don't you feel lonely sometimes? Yeah, yes and no. I think it really works out that I am an introvert and I'm very independent and I'm totally good. In fact, I prefer most times to do things by myself and be by myself. So yeah, moving a lot kind of works out, but I never move to a place that I don't know anyone. Like I, I would never move to like Denver, Colorado because I don't know anyone there and I don't have any sort of it's time! I don't have any sort of like social connection or support system in Denver, Colorado, so I wouldn't move there. Loneliness does freaking suck though. And that's when you just lean on family. Okay, let's rinse this out. Rinse for 15 to 20 minutes. Shampoo again and rinse for another five minutes. And repeat two more times. So they just want me to be pruny. That is insane. Oh, it's lighter. Oh, it's so stinky. I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, I just got out of the shower and my hair is this lightish red color. You can't really tell. I'll show you when it's dry. I think it kind of worked. John Frieda Precision Foam Color, Medium Chestnut Brown. Really hoping this works, everyone. Instructions, ladies and gentlefish. Whoa, girl. Five times is enough. Extra mixing will not create more foam. Hey. <laughs> Guys, this is so fun for us. The gloves are going back on. I can't believe we're doing this again and I'm gonna get pruny all over again and use so much water. It makes me feel kind of bad. We unscrew this and we put number two in there. One, two, three, four, five. Now we put the little foamer guy on there. Here's what the color looks like. I have no idea what that looks like, but you do. Oh. 
I couldn't see, but you could, yet again. <laughs> it's so stinky, why are they all stinkeroni? Oh wow. That is so fun. The chemicals are so strong. <laughs> Last layer, ladies and gentlemen. It's so weird because so many of my friends are engaged or married or have kids. It's insane. And I am fully, very, completely single. I did see some questions of you guys asking for an update on my dating life. There's nothing to report. But I'm okay with it for some reason. I'm confusing. Because I would love to have a life partner. I would love to have a boyfriend. I love love. I would love to be in love. But at the same time, I really also love being single and doing my own thing. I don't know. I just haven't found anyone that's like perfect, perfect for me. So I don't really care, you know? Like I don't feel like I'm wasting time or missing out or anything. I just am living summer's life that summer gets to live. The goal is to get married and then I won't be single ever again. That's the hope. So might as well enjoy being single right now. I feel like it's not foamy enough. Can't resist. It's just so fun. <laughs> well, now that I can do this, I think that means it's time. Wow, that is just comedy. Um, now it is time to let it sit. Okay, I think we did it. We set a timer. 25 minutes starting now. Now let's have a chat. Back to the beanbag. If you weren't doing YouTube, what would you do? I think there are a lot of things. I mean, I really want to act. Was going to maybe be an elementary school teacher. I was going to study psychology. Or I was going to go to film school. Or I was going to go to graphic design school. Or interior design. How are you going to decorate the new house? <laughs> so excited to do this. I've already made a whole Pinterest board, of course, and I will be making YouTube videos and TikToks and all kinds of content. My favorite thing ever is getting into a new spot and making it my own and making it cozy. And I just love having things in my space and my environment that make me smile when I look at them. That's the main goal. Have you ever been in a toxic relationship? Yeah, in a very big way. I don't even want to talk about it. It's one of my things that I am still healing from. Yeah. Anyway, why did you stop reacting to Endless Summer? It was so fun. I would do it again. Do people still care? I don't know. But if you guys would still want me to, I could. It definitely is a can of worms for me to open. And I hate stirring the pot and I feel like it kind of stirs the pot when I react to Endless Summer. Don't want to do that. But it is very interesting and I'm glad you guys liked it. Let me know. If you want me to do that, leave me a comment. And while you're at it, give the video a like. It means a lot when you do. Thank you. Do you have any side jobs? I mean, I guess you could call my Depop a side job, but no, I do social media full time. I guess the podcast is kind of a side job too. We still haven't really made money on the podcast, but I dedicate most of my time and energy to the podcast and our clothing line. So if you would like to support that, or if you want to give it a listen, I think it's a really fun, enlightening, awesome podcast but don't take my word for it. Go find out yourself. I'll have links in the description box. And our clothing, we only have one collection out. We're working on the second one. Really excited about that. So if you want to check that out, that'll also be in the description. I think those are all the questions I'm going to answer for now. We have 10 more minutes on the timer and then I'm going to wash it out and you'll see what it looks like. I'll see you after I rinse this out. This is the final product of my hair. I actually really like it. I'm very impressed. I really like the color. There's no red that I can see. So, mission accomplished. And now we are going to see the sunshine! Woo! Here are our outfits. Might as well show you. We have this Letterman jacket from opening ceremony. I've had this forever and I feel like it's very 50s. And then this dress. Can you point it down a little? This dress from Reformation, Reformation. I feel like it's also 50s. And I'm wearing these Supergas. But I think I'm gonna change into boots actually because they're kind of uncomfortable and they're very 50s, but. And now Madison. I got this shirt from a cute vintage place in Salt Lake. I can't remember the name of it. These are my mom's pants and belts. Nice. And here are my heels from ASOS. Fancy, um, where's oh, your purse? And I thrifted this at DI. Cute. Alright y'all get it.